Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ed the Pond Professor. On today's vlog, we're gonna be talking about retention ponds. What's happening in our watersheds is we're developing the landscape. We're uh, putting in buildings, parking lots that are altering the watershed. So retention ponds are valuable because they capture all of that storm water. Water quality is always a huge challenge with them and that's because they're inundated with all types of nutrients and it needs to be dealt with. Otherwise, over time, it causes serious problems. So today, I wanna show you a mixture of different types of retention ponds that I've been involved with on a, on a variety of capacities. It's going to show you some of the strategies on what we can do to make these guys look a little bit better. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so here is a prime example of an older retention pond. No circulation, no aeration, stagnant water, high nutrient loads. So you're getting runoff from parking lots and everything around here. Any fertilizers and things like that that are done on the turf around here, washed down inside of here, feeds the algae bloom. It actually chokes everything off dissolved oxygen changes, water temperatures are starting to go up. Uh, the system just kind of collapses on itself, but it's designed specifically for stormwater management. I mean, this just rises during a heavy rain and then slowly drops back down to this point. This is an example of the large parking lots. This is a stone's throw from the project location and we have lots of concrete, asphalt huge roofs so these are the some of the challenges that we have of having a built environment so we need to come up with strategies to fix that stuff one inch of rain for every square foot of surface area will generate 0.62 gallons of water so when you start talking huge parking lots like this that are multiple acres it's tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions of gallons of water during an average rain event and the challenge of that is the storm sewers storm sewers can't handle it the water backs up it has to go someplace so these are just a few of the challenges that we have to deal with and then this is where green infrastructure comes into play we could allow for infiltration we could have natural wetland areas different areas to mitigate some of the storm flow something that uh, i believe very strongly in it protects the local watersheds for the fishermen for the biodiversity of the area for all the different organisms that call these river systems their home so and it all starts with stormwater management and making it work for us instead of against us so here we are at the pond. It does not hold water. This is just the standing groundwater at this time. This is a traditional retention pond designed as a stormwater management tool. This is collecting stormwater runoff off of the roofs of these homes, off of the surrounding roadways. Water's coming in through a series of pipes. We have multiple pipes coming in that are rather large. And then the pipe going out is small. During heavy, heavy rains, this entire pond is gonna fill up all the way to the top of this wall. And then this pipe is a restrictor. So this will only let out a specific volume of water per hour, per day, etc. So what happens is the water will slowly draw down. Sediments, pollutants, and things like that will have a chance to kind of accumulate down here in the bottom. That's part of the stormwater process is to try to pre-filter the water. And what that's doing is it's protecting the downstream watershed. So the existing stormwater system for this community cannot handle all the homes all the parking lots, there's roadways, there's shopping centers, etc. If all that water was allowed to go directly into the storm sewer without going into a, a retention pond first, you'd have massive flooding. So our next steps, the water level, instead of being way down here, they want the water level all the way at the base of this block wall. We are not going to remove this wall. We're gonna drain water out. We're gonna to try to clean up some of the sediment and stuff that has accumulated down on the bottom. We're gonna to have to remove all the cobblestones from the perimeter, install the liner, anchor it down over here along the uh, the edge, put the cobblestones back on top of the liner. So on the very flat bottom, I would still put in river rock mix or some sort of soil cover or something just to act as a ballast. And what I mean by that is it's gonna hold the liner down. It will also act as a little bit of a biological filtration. By covering up the liner with all that material, it's going to lengthen the lifespan of the liner because it's gonna protect it from UV radiation. Because this is an existing retention pond, I would also have a drainage system underneath maybe three perforated drain pipes coming all the way back over this way into a sump area and I'd have everything pitched into a large clean out area not a crazy difficult project but there are some logistical challenges uh, retention ponds like I said are kind of common hundreds of thousands of them throughout the United States. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them look like this. The water quality is really not that great. We're gonna try to set up a few things, maybe an aeration system, decorative fountain, something like that, just to help um, keep the water circulated to give them a little bit better water quality because that's what all these people want.
um, over at Animazonia, and Claudia is going to show us a little bit of what they have here. They're mountain lion. Hiding. He's you know, hiding. Mountain lions really like to hide. <laughs> so, how much property do you have here? We have five and a half acres. Okay. Yeah, so he's seven years old. He came mm -hmm. to us when he was three. We're a, a, a sanctuary, Animazonia, and we feel that because humans are encroaching on their land mm -hmm. that it's important that, that we have sanctuaries for them. Absolutely. You know, it's really important that we take care of them because um, they lost their, they're losing their habitat. I would agree. Know? It's our duty. So I love working with facilities like this. They have an incredible mission. They're trying to um, help local wildlife that has been displaced. Uh, it is a rescue facility. They are doing their part and that is because right on the other side over there, massive freeways. We have homes, subdivisions, all this stuff that has popped up recently in this beautiful mountainous area. So now all the animals have been displaced, having clashes, I guess, with uh, humanity. So what we want to try to do is work with facilities like this, where they're actually taking animals in and putting funding together and research and money to save and help these animals with their habitat. So this pond was originally built back in 1992 too. You were saying that there was a heavy rain. That's right. You had a lot of rain coming down, which made kind of a wet spot, and you brought out an excavator and figured you might as well dig a pond. Yeah. So inside of here, you have mosquito fish, you have koi, catfish, so there's a good diversity of uh, fish turtles. in here. Turtles as well, rescue turtles. A lot of good aeration, which is key. Being this old, what I would probably recommend would uh -huh. be larger biological filter. They have an existing waterfall feature over on this side, so what I would probably recommend mend here is doing an intake bay so that's a customized skimmer system on the exact opposite side of where the waterfall is the reason i'm going to do that is i want to suck in all the water from the pond into this holding area pump would be located here we're going to take that water send it back over to the uh, waterfall area and i'd make that area larger and i would do what's called a constructed wetland filter so this is a large basin that is going to become home for different types of microorganisms bacteria enzymes all types of little critters that are actually going to feed on all of the nutrients in the pond so i could see from looking down inside of here you got this uh, greenish tint and everything to it that is a planktonic algae bloom and that's because there's excess nutrients in the water so all of that stuff needs to be broken down and we have to find something that's going to feed on that. The idea is to set up that home of microorganisms over in here that would detoxify the water and we would have all that water recirculating coming back over. We want to fix problems like this because this is a bigger and bigger problem that's popping up worldwide. So this is not just a localized thing. This is a worldwide issue and we want to do what we can to help. And it all starts right here with water because water, as we all know, is the source of all life. So everything has to come down here to drink. So we want to make sure that we have healthy water for all these animals as well as capturing storm water. Instead of using water or treating it as a liability, we want to treat it as an asset because it is the most important compound on planet Earth. Uh, you look at a globe and you will see it is blue because the majority of it's water. So we just want to make sure that we protect it for future generations. And we want to do as best we can right now with this precious resource so we could help the biodiversity of the planet. Grapevine, Texas. Actually, I'm on my way to another consulting project in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I wanted to check out a project that I built here a couple of years ago. This is a really neat uh, recreation center that they created here for the city. They did this meandering stream in front, so check this out. Everything is looking great. What they wanted to do is kind of create this little type of a spring creek type of a look. This is part of a drainage system, and it's managing that stormwater. There's actually a large reservoir down over here at the bottom. What happens is during a storm event, all this water is going to come racing down here, and it fills up in that tank down below below and then it overflows into the local storm sewer. So this is a stormwater pond. It is looking really, really good. I could see like little water striders and whirligig beetles and that type of stuff swimming around on the surface. That's always a really good indicator. So this entire bed is actually acting as a biological filter, which is helping to pre-filter the stormwater that's running off into the local storm sewer system. This is where everything kind of starts out right up in here. Now there is a storm overflow connection. There's actually another system that's not connected with this one and the other side of that bridge. 
Here's another one of those big reservoirs. So this is a stormwater reservoir. This is designed to flood during heavy rain events. This one has a little bit more flow and that's because it's right by the main entry. Now tomorrow I actually have a meeting with some architects and designers and a developer that I started working with a couple of years ago as well for a large project very similar to this one but just on a grander scale. Different scale but similar philosophies and that's what our goal is. So we want to create modular type systems so once you understand the basics of how these systems work you can actually scale it up or down accordingly. Two days ago I was doing presentations in Chicago. Today I am right over by Fort Worth Airport. So right now we are standing 50 plus feet above the pond, way down over there somewhere. And I'm over a quarter of a mile away from that pond. We're trying to mimic nature. So this is called Storm Park for a reason. So we're trying to create almost like a sp uh, spring creek type of a setup. Have our wetland filter. There's also a well that's gonna be feeding this. And that's because this is part of a massive lake system. I mean, if you look around here, actually, as far as you can see in all directions, this is all one development. Thousands and thousands and thousands of homes being built over here. They're trying to make sure that they keep this big lake full. And this is a multi-acre lake. So our wetland will fill up from our pumping system. It's going to spill down. And this is just this little meandering creek system. This will all get heavily planted with aquatic vegetation. That vegetation will kind of be on these shorelines in that saturated zone where the water meets the land. That's that little riparian habitat, which is super, super important important from a filtration standpoint as well as overall water quality, biodiversity, you name it. I mean that's where kind of the magic happens. This is kind of a deep plunge pool. This will have water lilies and things like that inside of there. This is six feet deep. Some really cool interesting spots. These areas where we have these little what we call stone drops. So this is going to be the first major waterfall coming through here. So people walking across this bridge are going to be able to look upstream. They're going to be able to see this waterfall. They're going to see this little twisting turning spring creek type thing that uh, starts all the way up there at the top and then from here this overflows into another one so it's just a series of ponds each one of these ponds is designed for water treatment heavily planted aquatic vegetation there's a storm sewer that's coming in way over on the other side of that cat 320 and then the water continues down the pond system and goes all the way down to our pumping system which is located way over here that's the existing lake that's here on site that overflows into the trinity river located right here so here are some of the natural features on this uh, property so they've done a good job here instead of just making them look like retention ponds very gentle slopes coming down so it's not really steep they have uh, native aquatic vegetation going around the perimeter so this looks super super natural functions really well feature that we're doing on the other end of the development going to be a little bit different than this designed more to be a little bit more interactive there's more walking paths going around it and we're going to have more of a consistent flow rate so our water quality is going to be better this is all just to, meant to look like kind of a marshy wetland area uh, this is the large lake that the overflow from our storm park is connecting to. The part where we're at is way at that far other end. So just a beautiful facility. I love what they've done. They're being creative with their stormwater runoff. Uh, they're doing great jobs from an environmental standpoint, as well as still keeping some beautiful architecture. All the homes and everything's around the perimeter. Everything is very well designed and taken care of here. And these are the type of projects I like being connected with. A little bit more ecologically uh, minded, but still beautiful uh, facilities. So here's a great example of why we do retention ponds. Southern shore of Lake Michigan, Chicago, somewhere right over in here. It's all part of the same watershed. All of our runoff goes downstream. It goes into our bigger lakes. It goes into the Mississippi River, which goes to the Gulf of Mexico. Everything is connected by protecting the watershed close to home in our backyards, parking lots, developments, having the right strategies in place to protect that water and to remove some of the nutrients and sediments. It allows us to have access to all the tourism, all the recreational activities that are associated with a healthy watershed. If you have polluted water, you're not in the water. So the economy actually relies on healthy resources. Everything is connected. And that is what an ecosystem is actually all about. It's the combined efforts of all of them together. That's where we really get the benefits.